Hi, ABC family. Welcome to your midweek devotion. This week, I wanted to talk to you guys about expectation. So one of my favorite verses to start off the year with is Psalm 65, 11, and it says, you will crown this year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways will overflow with abundance. In Hebrew, the word crown means to surround. So I love that God is saying he wants to surround our year with his goodness. And that's something right there to grasp a hold of. That means each month, every day, every moment will be surrounded with his goodness, his overflow and abundance. That's what he wants for your year. Now, as we're closing the chapter on 2022, it's easy to focus on all the things that, you know, did not end the way that we would deem as goodness, right? I know for me, I was filling out my calendars for 2023 and I wasn't having this yay new year moment. I was having more almost dread, like, oh my gosh, we're going into another year and look at where we're at and I don't even know how we're going to do this and how are we going to do that and I don't, what's going to happen and, you know, all of a sudden that starts plaguing your thoughts and as I was contemplating these things and thinking on these things, I was opening my mail and one of the letters I pulled out, the heading was how to love life and see good days in 2023. And instantly the Holy Spirit stopped me and said, what are you expecting? What are you hoping for? And he said, your expectation is your destination. And that just struck a chord with me. My expectation is my destination. What is my expectation? What do I want to see? Where do I want to go? What does God have for me? Right? In sports, it's a lot about where are you looking when you're hitting the ball and kicking the ball and throwing the ball. Body posture matters, but it's where are you looking? And you constantly hear, look at where you want it to go and it will go. If your eyes are not looking in that direction, then it doesn't matter how the rest of you set up. It's not going to go to the correct destination. And as I was meditating on that, thinking on things that are true and lovely and just, right? And pure and of a good report. That's when Psalm 65 11 popped into my head. And I started thinking he will crown this year with goodness, with a bountiful harvest. And even my hard pathways will overflow with abundance. It was what did I, what was I choosing to focus on? And I realized in that moment that I need to be looking forward in faith, living each day with hope for the good things that are to come. I want to wake up every day and have a genuine love for life and be ready to see the goodness of God and see what he has for me. Now in that same verse are the words hard pathways. And I like that because it's God's acknowledging life's not easy. It's not a bed of roses, right? We're going to have hard things. 2 Corinthians 4, 8-9 says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. So yes, in this life, we're going to have troubles. But I love how Apostle Paul said, we have trouble on every side, but we're not distressed. Because Paul knew how to keep God's word final authority in his life. And that's key this year. Keeping God's word as final authority, not your circumstances. See, Paul had all of these things coming around him. And he was saying, it may be there. That's happening out here. But every time he kept going back to the but, I'm not distressed. But I'm not in despair. Because he was like, mm, no, but God's word is final authority in my life. And he was choosing to have expectations so that he had a destination. Um, I like the word perplexed in that scripture. Perplexed in the word in Greek means, in that scripture, it uh, means um, to be cornered by your circumstances, right? So I really like that version of it because Paul's saying, you may be cornered by your circumstances, but you're not gonna be in despair, right? We can all relate to those emotions perplexed, persecuted, cast down, in despair, feels like everything's around you from all sides. I just hear pressure, 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 pressure from all sides, health, relationship, finances, job, right? That's to be cornered by your circumstances. And God's saying in that verse, yes, there are things that are going to try and steal your peace and steal your health and steal your joy. But even Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world, you will have tribulation, but I have overcome this world. It's telling you, he's telling you, what are you focusing on? Where's your expectation? Where should your eyes be? Shouldn't be down and at. It should be looking up, looking forward in faith. First Peter 3, 10 through 11 says, For he who would love life, 
So you who want to love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from seeking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. So yes, like Paul had, he had pressure from all sides, but he knew how to apply this verse that Peter was talking about. You may be able to be cornered by all your circumstances, feeling surrounded and pressured, but then what did Peter say you have to do? He says, okay, you can still live, love life and see good days. If what? If one, you keep your tongue from evil. This is so powerful. It's not just saying be kind to people. It's saying don't speak the problem. Don't focus on the circumstances. Hebrews 10.23 says, hold fast to your confession without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. The Bible says unbelief is evil. Pastor Michael on Sunday talked about it's not a quick fix. You don't just suddenly jump into something and in a week it's there. No, 90 days, right? 90 days to change a habit. And the Bible says in Hebrews, hold fast to that confession. Don't just let it go. Hold fast to it because God is faithful. Um, so what expectations have has God given you this year? Hold fast to it without wavering. <clears throat> so the Bible also talks about complaining and it says that complaining is an evil way of speaking. Remember, number one was keep your tongue from evil. And so complaining is an evil way of speaking according to God. So right there, you keep your tongue from speaking unbelief, but then you also keep your tongue from complaining day in and day out about your circumstances. Now, is it okay to grieve? Yes. Is it okay to vent your situation to God? Yes. No one is saying pretend you don't have problems, but you have to dig down somewhere and say, okay, but what am I going to choose to focus on? What am I going to choose to do? Am I going to complain about the lack and the sickness and the dysfunction? Or am I going to go to those scriptures and go to God's word and hold fast to the promises without wavering? The Israelites are a prime example of complaining. They were, um, were they wrong in their complaints? No, they were not having the best situation, right? But they focused on all this outside circumstances and not the inside truth. In Hebrews 3.19, it says their unbelief manifested over and over in their murmuring, grumbling, and constant complaining against God. That was the proof of their unbelief in their constant complaining. That'll tell you if you truly believe God's word or not. What are you constantly saying? The Bible said that they complained in their tents where they thought no one could hear them. This reminded me of my kids. Sometimes when they get in trouble or they're angry, they storm off in the room and you can hear them grumbling and complaining in there. And they come back out and I'll say, you know, I might not know exactly what you said, but God does. He's in there with you. God's with you at all times. Even when you don't think anyone else hears or knows, God does. And the Bible said, God heard the Israelites and was displeased. So if you catch yourself complaining constantly, stop and say, okay, I need to change my focus. What is my expectation? And start to find things to be thankful for. Going back to Peter, he said, tell the truth. So be honest with yourself and with God always. Be honest. And then it said, okay, so keep your tongue from evil. Be honest with yourself. But then it said, turn away from evil. Do good and pursue peace. There is so much evil in this world, but we have to be consistent to turn away from it again and again and keep God's word at that front and center and continue to do good and pursue that peace, right? Jeremy Pearson said that in his heart this year, he is hearing the words, the faithful will be fruitful and the faithful will be thankful. Faithfulness is key in loving life and seeing good days. Let's be faithful to watch over our words, faithful to speak truth and be honest, faithful to turn away from evil over and over, to do good and pursue peace. Faithfulness isn't always an easy journey. Faithfulness is something that is never tiring, always enduring. You're resisting the temptation to run to what is easy over what is right. I love, love how he said, you who are faithful will be fruitful. Pastors spoke on Sunday about the garden that God wants to produce in our lives. This year, seeds have been planted, but in order for those seeds to be fruitful, to produce a garden, we must first be faithful. Faithful in watering our seeds, cultivating our soil, daily pulling the weeds, trimming off the dead growth. I mean, can you see the correlation to growing a garden into your and your daily life? Are you spending time with God? Are you watering what he planted in your heart? Daily pulling out doubt and fear and anxiety and anger and strife, trimming off those parts that shouldn't be there. Troubled on every side, but not distressed. Why? Because I am fruitful and I am faithful. Perplexed, but not in despair, because I am faithful and I am fruitful. 
persecuted, but not cast down and not destroyed, right? Why? Because I am faithful and I am fruitful. That's how you can apply that first. How can you be cornered in by your circumstances and still come out on top? Because you are faithful. So therefore you are fruitful. So I'm going to end this with, I am planning on loving this year and being surrounded with goodness, overflow, and abundance. I'm not going to be running out this year, but I am going to be running over in Jesus name, right? But it's a choice. I must make this new year. I have to choose what is my expectation so that I can follow that? I'm choosing to be faithful, to keep my tongue from evil, to be honest and truthful, do good, pursue peace. I'm going to be faithful with my church, faithful with God, faithful to his word. Be faithful to your family, to your work, in your tithing. Be faithful and you will be fruitful this year. God's desire is for you to experience his goodness in such a way that even the most difficult experiences from last year or even the last several years, they're going to turn around because Psalm 65 11 says, even the hard pathways are going to overflow with abundance. So this is the picture that I want you to keep in your mind for this week and to expect for the upcoming year. Expect God's goodness to surround your year, that you will have overflow and abundance. Your expectation is your destination. So have a wonderful, blessed new year. Bye.